Pengu Khan 2015 yeah, yeah, yeah. tour. Uh, I was going to say it was 2005. I was going to say, haven't they ever heard of uh, tour, but not the uh, animation? <laughs> Dot Matrix, uh, Megabyte. Uh, okay. <laughs> There's actually, it's called Reboot. The person lives in a site, in a, uh, his little place, his, his lair is called the Tor. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there we go. First and foremost, my little disclaimer. I'm not responsible if you break anything. <laughs> okay. Bad people use it. Good people use it. If, you're, if you happen to be up and you're... Wife happens to see sites you shouldn't, it's, you get a divorce. Don't come call to me, not my fault. <laughs> Basics to cover our history, kind of history of it overview. Uh, hidden service, have you ever heard of hidden services? So, have you ever used hidden services or tried to set up hidden services? Okay, I'm going to show that. It's real simple. Real easy. If anybody was to my presentation yesterday, uh, this is a lot easier to understand, a lot easier to work with than the one yesterday, the IGP yesterday. Uh, I'll discuss some attacks, because you can attack it, even though they say it's perfect. And if you have questions. And also, if you have any questions, please throw them up, because this is interaction. What is Tor? Why would you want to use Tor? Why would you care if, what, what reason would there be? You know, you want, everybody likes to surf, everybody likes to go places, everybody likes free things. Why would you have to worry about people tracking you? Why would you have to worry about people doing what you do? Don't we like to have everything? Don't we like to have all this free stuff? That's not true of our world, though. Right. <coughs> Basically, tourist is an anim an anim anonymizing tool. <laughs> to communicate, to improve discussion, to communicate between sites so people won't know anything about you or little about you. Uh, you could set up individual sites yourself. So if you want to have a site that you want only certain people to get to, or if you want to be able to discuss things back and forth and, and not have people track you, if you want to go to places and not have to worry about people saying, OK, we we'll send you cookies for this site, for that site, it kind of works like that. It's not an encryption tool. If you go to, go to a site and you're going to have open encrypt, unencrypted data, it's going to be open and unencrypted when it goes to the site. It's, it may be encrypted inside the Tor network, but from if it goes in unencrypted, it's going to go out unencrypted. And it's not a web security, web security replacement. If you have a bad web, if you have bad plugins on your web browser, if you have bad uh, setups on your web browser, this ain't going to fix it. This is not going to do it. It's a little history. Hello. Yeah. There we go. Tor is defined by DARPA. Everybody heard DARPA? Back in the 1990s. They were using it because they wanted to make sure that other countries couldn't track when their people pretty much spy on other people. That's what it was basically designed for. Uh, government communications. It was taken over in 2006 by the Tor Foundation and the EFF. So it's reasonably safe to say that they're not tracking you. And it's open source. So if, you want, if you're afraid of pulling down the software and worrying that somebody else attacked it, you can actually pull down the code, look at it, verify nobody's modified anything, compile it, and let it happen. <coughs> Organizations that are using it, EFF, obviously. Uh, Reporters Without Borders are using it. They actually have uh, hidden sites that you could go to to post stuff. Uh, Washington Post has one. The Guardian, obviously, from the Snowden Leaks, they have a uh, web presence on it. And oddly enough, Facebook does. If you really want to go to the Facebook and if you think it's going to be safe, well, it's, you think about it. 
a little overview on it. So the components, you'll have a client, which you install on your local machine. The server, that's obviously a place you want to go to. Tor nodes, that's actually the individual components that you connect to that, that actually create the anonymity. And directory services, think of that as a DNS. It has its own Tor DNS that it uses to create its circuits. Again, welcome everybody who's just coming in. Please, if you have any questions, talk. Some of the designs of Tor, it's, they're fixed packets, yeah, 1024 in length. They used to be uh, adjustable, but they were finding you could do frequency modifications to the data. You could actually track it. They decided to change it. Not all the places are that way, but right now, the packets are 1024 byte in size, uses TCP, so you still have some of the flakiness with TCP where they could actually do certain encryption and certain uh, networking protocols, you can actually track where the packet are go is going, but it's getting, I'll explain that a little bit later. Uh, it's encrypted between nodes, it's like this. When you're in the, when you're in the Tor network, it's in, the data is encrypted between you and the person that you're saying the data through is gonna send it to somebody else. And it does do some integrity checking. So if you have, you'll know that if you send something in, it makes sure that the packet itself is not modified, not been damaged on the way out. So it checks that way. How Tor work? It's Tor, think of an onion. It layers one, in, one encryption on top of another encryption on top of another. That's why they call it the onion network. It's later, you have your message, and then each routing path between this person, this person is encrypted, that person, that one is encrypted. So. Oh, so it's actually inside of, there's a, an encrypted packet inside of an encrypted? Yes. Inside of, oh. inside of encrypted, inside of encrypted, inside of encrypted. Initially, it's three levels. So when you start, you'll be connected to a site, and that'll be, that's a that's general encryption between you and the first <coughs> node you're going to. From that node to the second one, that's one layer. Like say your router A would be one layer. From that one to the next one, it's router B is another layer, and router C is another layer. So even if somebody, if router B is bad and says, ooh, I want to see what the packet is, they can't because it's actually sourced to router C. So they have to, they would have to be the entire length of it to be able to find out what your data is. And then again, onions. If anybody's interested, it's 1024-bit, definitely held an algorithm with an RSA uh, as well. So I don't know how many geeky. Now, if anybody wants, uh, there's a, uh, I'll talk about it later, but there's a uh, website you can go to that talks about how in-depth that they encrypt stuff. How it works. This is from EFF, so if you want to go to the toy site, this is kind of what it is. First thing you have to do is when you, after you load the software, is you go to a directory service, they call it Dave, but it's, it's like a DNS. So it gets an idea, where do, where do I go first? Who do I go to? These are all your, these are all nodes, people running nodes. You have to find out who you're going to first. And then it just creates a circuit. It says, hey, I'm gonna go to, what's my, I'm gonna go my first person, it comes to my second person, it comes to my third person, it sends out, it's like I said, it's, so Bob is outside the Tor network, that's why yes. it's unencrypted? Well, yeah, Bob could be outside or Bob could be inside. But right now it shows Bob. Bob is like, uh, I don't know, um, Google. You want to go Google. That could be Bob. It's, it's, on, it's anonymizing it. So if you come, once you start the network and you do, uh, what is it, uh, what is my IP, you may be, Regular maybe uh, 67, 84, 127.6. When you run it with Tor, you may be 261, 14, 18, 12, which is actually the IP address of your exit node. Okay. A nice thing about Tor 2 is after roughly 10 minutes, it will actually re anonymize so you have a whole new path. You can adjust that if you want it to be every five minutes, every 20 minutes, but it just, so you're not always gonna be using the same circuit, the same path to go from one place to another, it changes. It 
this is kind of another little layout. You see how the you, you everything's wrapped together. Each node is wrapped in one, wrapped up. So that's a year. You go to the tour project, you pull it. I would recommend you get the bundle because it has the web, the uh, software, plus it has a browser that's been configured to not have a lot of the leaks that some of the new ones, if you have uh, Java installed, if you have all kinds of odd plugins, it doesn't have any of that. It's a Firefox browser. Um, it's version uh, 31.6 uh, is the current version. So it's actually a couple versions later, but they've modified it so it doesn't have some of the security holes and some of the security leaks that the, if you have a lot of plugins, you'll have. Uh, Linux, Mac, Windows, Raspberry Pi. Um, they actually have one now for uh, Android. So if you use Android phone, you can use Tor now as well. And it, it runs on their browser. I would recommend not running your browser and their browser at the same time. It kind of, it'll cause little issues. <clears throat> Now, hidden service, that's, any other questions previous to this? Or have I confused everybody? A hidden service is just that. It's a service on the Tor network that is only available to the people on the Tor network. You can't get to it from, you can get to it from the outside if you know the, their actual IP address, because it uses TCP. If you have, you set up a web server at home that you can get to from the regular network, you run Tor, Tor can get to it, but if somebody still knows your IP address from the outside, they can get to it. That's like I said, it uses, it's a standard TCP IP configuration, it uses the same IP address you would if you were regular world. It just hides it so they would have to do a lot of extra work to find out where it's at. If you want to publish something, except like they do it for, if you have countries that frown on freedom of speech and frown on uh, uh, getting information like China and that, that's when a nice a toy hidden service would be nice because you could actually post that information on that server and have other servers, other services connect to it and post information that way everybody from a China could actually connect to that and use it. <clears throat> to set up a hidden service, obviously you have to have a web server up and running. You can use Apache, you can use PHP, or not PHP, you can use, uh, what is it, Tiny Web, whatever web server you want to use, it works. You install the Tor on your server, whether it be Windows, Linux, or Mac. There's a file called Tor RC, or Tor <coughs> RRC, depending on where you're located, what server you're using or what operating system you're using, it'll be wherever. It could be under Etsy, it could be under Windows, whatever. It's nice because you have to modify two parts of the file, the hidden service directory and the hidden service port. A hidden service port is just that. Whatever port you're going to use on your web server, you configure it for localhost and the web server, the port that you want it to connect to. So if you're using 8080, whatever, you change it. In service directory, that actually, it's a redirect from Tor to say, okay, when I get information, where do I want to redirect it to? Where do I want to put it to? It also creates your keys, your public and private keys. It, it's your ports. Uh, it turns your virtual ports, hidden service names, it generates your host name, it generates the .onion file that people will use when they want to go to the, your public, your private site. Then you save it. It, it gives you two things, your private key and your host name. Save your private key. If they get your private key, they can become you. Your host name, example, that's a host name. 56DFGE6ST.onion. 
It's a people familiar. Everybody's familiar with public key, private key. That's what it is. That's that's your public key. The the other one is your public key, and the private key is your your key exchange private key. People that the site you would, when you bring up the uh, Tor browser on your side, that's what you type in the five six, and you would go to it. Is the hidden service directory, is that where the actual web pages live? No. Or that's just where the configuration lives? That's the redirect. Your web page, so you'd set up your web server just like you normally would. Everything the same way, the location, everything. Gotcha. What this is doing is, right. the bottom one is actually saying, when, I'm gonna, when I receive Tor information, or if I say somebody wants to send stuff to me to get my website, this is where it's coming in, and that's where it's going to be redirect, redirected to. Yeah, that's what it's all really is, it's simply redirection. And it is always a dot onion. What it will also do is, once it sets it up, it'll send out the key and your IP address to the Tor domain service. It's like a big data, it's like the big DNS. It'll populate it for you. Or you could send it to somebody else. If you don't, if they, uh, some, for some reason you put it up on a search site and it will, it will populate it out. So you, don't, you don't have to send it, but you can send it to somebody if you want. This is kind of how it works. Um, it's obviously a website running a tour, running the tour package on this local machine. And it will go out and say, I'm here, give me circuit connections. Give me some, give me places I can connect to that people can connect back to me. And it said, Alice wants to go to Bob. Then it sends up its key to the database so that the network, when, these, when the P1, P2, P3 nodes say, where is this guy, they go up to that database as well to get the key information. Then Alice will do the same thing, because I want to find Bob's website, and this is my address. It goes up to the database and says, who is this 56866.onion? It sets it up. And then it makes this connection, and you can go to it. Simple, easy. Connects back and forth, and it, it'll always stay. It's, it'll. It's the same way. If it's running, if you're sending information for, if it's uh, within ten minutes or so, if it's not being used, it'll redirect it to another one of the little nodes. Um, the Diagrams are showing Bob outside of the Tor network. Yes, he is. He's actually a relay. No, he's he can well he can be a relay, but he's this in this aspect he's actually showing it on his own. He's he's okay. running the Tor yes. software, but he's okay. not considered a node as a relay on the Tor network. He's off to the side. Does he does he have actually a web page? Is that what we're talking about? Yes. Oh, okay. So he. As he's the end point. He's an end point. But he's, you don't have to leave the Tor network to get to it. No, this is all within the Tor network. Okay. Right, it's, it's bad. I, it's bad that it's not, this should show him actually in here, but he's actually part of the Tor network, a hidden, a hidden service of the Tor network. So we don't have to worry about when you're just normally using Tor to go to Google, you've got that unencrypted uh, last connection here, you don't have that. No, it's encrypted okay. up to it, it's all the way from Yours, because you're in it's you're in the system itself. So from you to it, it's encrypted. He could still, you know, he could be a bad person and send you Java code back and say, okay, what type of site you're at, what type of IP are you actually really using? It is possible to do that. Does the index database have some sort of redundancy, or is that a single server? No, it's multiple servers. It's, uh, I believe the last time I was doing some research on it, it was seven, but they probably expanded. Right? It's, or is it like a cloud? It's a, it's a nebulous cloud type system, yeah. 
We got them at uh, DFF runs some, MIT runs some, uh, the tour, the tour uh, uh, group runs some. They they're usually pretty, pretty they're synchronized pretty quick together. You put you can put your site up there and probably within five maybe ten minutes it's available. So it's pretty quick. So is that what uh, they mean when they talk about voice and data? Yes. So you're never going to know you. Like with with any technology, it can be used for good or bad, but and also some other endpoint, uh, uh, some other parts of the poison endpoints are the nodes themselves could be poisoned. The site could be poisoned, or the node could be poisoned. Because you can actually, uh, people are familiar with uh, um, Amazon's EC2. They actually have a service where you can run up nodes. You can actually bring up nodes for fifteen bucks a month. For uh, I think it's 15 bucks a month for 20 gig or 15 gig. I don't remember the last thing. You can actually spin up nodes. You can spin up thousands of nodes if you wanted to, or hundreds of nodes if you wanted to, and become your own bad person or your own good person. Any questions? Kind of on how the uh, hidden services sent across or connected together? No, confused everybody. Hmm? Yeah, it's it's just change two change two entries. Have your web server running, and you get you have your own hidden service. I I use this for uh, a couple sites I've set up. People use like uh, PHP BB, both board services. Um, own cloud. They've had them set up own cloud. Um, they've had them set up. Uh, WordPress sites. The one thing you have to really be careful about is when you're setting up a PHP BB, WordPress, own cloud, what, when it asks you for the IP address, or it asks you for your site name, you give it the onion site name, not the IP address or the DNS address that you know if you're outside of the, of the cloud. Because the software itself it hard codes your, that information into it. So I've set that up before, I've set up a PHP, and I figured out, why can't I get to it? It turns out you have to use the, the Onion cloud if you want to get it to, get it to it from the Onion. It's just part of some, I think uh, WordPress is a little bit not as strict, but PHP requires the IP address, or the, uh, the un dot .onion address be hard coded into it when you're setting it up. Word, WordPress does require the name. It doesn't require the name? Yeah. That's probably why. So yeah. it's just a little, because I spent a couple of hours trying to figure out why I can't get to it. If it's working fine, I can't get to it. And unfortunately, once you set that up, you won't be able to get to it from an IP address. You have to use through Tor. So you can't, like, do it on the site? Well, if you, if you can, I'd never run across the way to do it. I just usually have to go in. I know where the, where the little place, where the little database entry is, so I have to change it. Go to what I have to do, change it back. Tor attacks. There are a lot of them. The NSA loves to try to attack this, and it has. Biggest question is who's running the nodes? How do you know that the node you're going to is a good node or a bad node? The encryption will help, but if it's a first node or a last node, the encryptions are getting stripped off at that point so that they can read it. And like I said, it's nothing for the three-letter agencies to spin up hundreds of exit nodes or hundreds of entrance nodes. Packet analysis, you can read the metadata database information. They can attack the main DNS entry, the database that's holding all the entries, they could attack that. They could take one over and break it out. This is okay. This person's this this IP address is this person. This IP address is this person. Your website you're going to could be misconfigured. You could have a hidden web, a hidden Tor website, 
and you don't have it configured right, so it's leaking data about where the website's located, what the IP address is located. Your web browser could be goofed up. Initially, when you were probably a year, maybe two years ago, you'd get two pieces of software with, that you'd run that become, you'd set up your tour, but you would have to use your own web, your own web browser. That's why if you, when they got the bundle, they got rid of all that issue. A lot of people would have their web browsers, they'd have all kinds of plugins and stuff, so it would be saying, this is who I am, or maybe going through the tour network in one aspect, but sending information another way out to another. And the sites they go to, they may have Java code on them, they may have PHP code that's searching your uh, server, or searching your uh, machine. Because, I don't know if anybody's read, that there's there were some hacks people have done with Java. They could say, you know, what size screen you're running, what type of CPU you have, what type of um, network card you have. This, this won't stop that. It makes it more difficult, but it's like everything else. It's not perfect. So is a helpful rule of thumb to set up your <clears throat> Tor browser to, to um, keep changing your IP address fairly often, like every five minutes instead of well, first thing off, get the bundle. Get the entire <laughs> package bundle. It has the Tor browser that's configured without all the Java information, oh, all yeah. the plugins. So get that first. And it does, every 10 minutes, it will reconfigure re your, your circuit. So every, it'd be maybe more, maybe less. That's just the random amount. Of, the average time is about 10 but minutes. That, that's going to be a little helpful to keep reconfiguring. Yeah. yeah. There's... Uh, I didn't, I didn't go into it, but there is extra, there's other settings you can do within the configuration file to do it every five minutes. Um, you can actually say, instead of having three hops, which is the default, give me five hops. Give me ten hops. Give so me all this is going to make it more difficult for somebody to see that you're the same person. Correct, correct. So uh, back to the browser thing, I mean you have uh, cookies and things like that that have maybe some information about what you've done, who you are. If, if you go to a website that you know, looks at the cookies, that's giving away the information, right? So you'd want to be careful about what information is in your browser. Well, with the browser you get from them, they have cookies are thrown away when you close the browser. So unfortunately, if you have, if you put in passwords and everything, you may have to re-put the password in again, which for, 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 for anonymizing and for anatomy, anon, anonymity, that's not bad. It's, that's something to live with. But your cookie cache could still be poisoned for one session. Yes. Yeah. Like, you'll still have the TCP attacks. They're still possible because it's still riding on the TCP layer. You still have some of the uh, poisoning, some of the attacks are still kind of possible, but it's less. Again, it's not a 100% perfect. It's not perfect. If you want it to be perfect, don't use the network. It's like, again, like I said, the, uh, the government can spin up hundreds of thousands of, of nodes. It's cheap. Oh, you can. I think um, Bruce Schneier last night yeah. said, if the NSA wants that computer, they they'll, get get it. It. they'll get it. What we can do is stop them from getting everyone's computer and mass surveillance. Correct. Um, the more people that use it, <clears throat> the better the toy network is. So, so who's Bruce Schneider? Bruce Schneider. Bruce Schneider. Our keynote speaker last night. So, all right. Right. so some of us didn't see that because we're another. Ah. Um, like I said, this will be posted out. There's a couple papers on discusses on how the encryption works. The Tor blog is a fantastic site on how the people are trying to attack it. Things like uh, uh, passive attack analysts analyzing data. They have uh, timing attacks where they would, I think somebody mentioned uh, tracking a packet from point A to point B by its speed how fast it takes to go from here to here. Um, there's some other ones. Uh, sample traffic analysis. There was actually a paper written probably a year ago where some researchers were able to do passive packet analysis 
and they were able to check out one in every 2,000 packets they were able to track. It's getting better because of, that was before Tor decided to have or make sure that the packet sizes were the exact same size every time. So no matter, you could have one bit of data and it's still 1024, the packet is still the same size. So 